hello students welcome to the physics class so as you know we are studying some basic norms of the c pro means i cannot say it's a c programming but just still now we are studying what is about programming right we have not still switched to c program but in general what should we know while we are writing the program or while we are communicating with the computer what all the basic things we should know about that we are discussing and as you know in the previous class i told you about algorithms how to write the algorithms of any program i have told you so today one more basic preliminary of programming i am going to discuss that is about flow charts okay so what is what is mean by flow chart means in the last class only you have uh, what you have studied how to write an algorithm means if any any formula in the kind uh, radius of uh, area of a circle we studied no there we read read the radius radius first then what we done then we written the formula then we gave print print radius then we stopped the program means continuous steps of the programs we have written in the algorithmic form so the same thing happening here but here what we are doing here is we are representing any program in the diagrammatic diagrammatic manner right so this flow chart is nothing but what it is the diagrammatic representation of an algorithm right so you have written the algorithm that means what we have written the program step wise so whatever that algorithm is there no that if you want to represent it in the form of diagram then we have to go through flow charts right so these are nothing but a chart showing a flow or the logic involved in any program right in this example only you consider how the program went on means there is a flow in the program first we read the radius then we uh, then we written its formula then we told the computer to print radius then stop means there is a flow there is a flow happening in the every step means in a flow the program is moving so to to run this program also you applied some logics over there right so this flow chart meaning i can say it as this is a chart showing a flow of logic involved in solving any problem we have solved the problem of area of circle here right so we can define this flow chart as the it is the diagrammatic representation of any algorithm okay so what is diagrammatic representation means to build any house before that what the people will do they'll just take a blueprint means they'll just go for a rough rough design first right to that we often call it as a blueprint like that okay so before writing any program we will just think of it roughly right so we will make it it's a blueprint so this flow chart is also it is a blueprint of any algorithm flow chart is also a blueprint of any algorithm right or it is also defined as a visual or graphical representation of an algorithm it is a diagramic diagrammatical representation of an algorithm visual representation of the algorithm graphical representation of algorithm or we can call it as the blueprint of an algorithm okay so in the flow chart there are two types first one is program flow chart and second one is system flow chart okay so this flow chart it is just an easy way to understand or to analyze any problem it is useful aid for the programmers and the system analysis that's why we divided it in program flow chart and system flow chart means who are developing the programs the programmers they can use program flow chart or the someone who are analyzing any system system analysts they can use the system uh, flow chart 
okay na so to write any flow chart or to draw any flow chart we must know some basic things about it like we in the means i told you that this is just a diagram so how the diagram goes means we use some symbols over here okay so i'll just draw a chart over here here i am writing geometrical symbol okay geometrical symbol and what its name is and what it to do what it do in any program okay so the first geometrical symbol comes is like this like this the first geometrical symbol came and to this we call it as a oval and it will what it will do it will start the program or it will stop the program okay so when we use oval in any flow chart that indicates it is the starting of the program or it is the ending of the program right so the second thing second thing i am using a what is this yeah this is a parallelogram parallelogram so what it will do what this parallelogram will do in the flow chart means it is used to indicate the input and output what is input means what are the readings you are insert uh, giving to the computer and output means what as the result you are expecting from the computer so the third one is it is a simple rectangle hmm? third one is what rectangle and why we are using this rectangle means processing so when we give the inputs as a a and b so a and b input we are given we write it in the parallelogram okay and we are expecting the result as a sum of a and b so doing that sum process is there no so that process is indicated by the rectangle okay and we use diamond also diamond also why this diamond is used means to make any decision decision making means uh, yes or no hmm? yes or no if uh, a is greater than b yes or no that decision we have to make na or b is greater than a this decision we have to make na so to make the decisions we use the diamond okay and also we use some arrow marks we use arrow marks also arrows that is nothing but what connecting the steps connections okay and we also use the circle and that is why the small circle is used means continuation means we from one step to another step you are continuing the program that is denoted by using the circle okay now so the last one we are using is the this geometrical symbol we call it as a hexagon hexagon so why hexagon is used to repeat any step huh? repetition repetition or looping means making the same steps again and again hmm? to this these all uh, the hexagon is used so this is all what the basic things we should know to write any flow chart okay na so you just copy it okay these much symbols we are using in flow chart okay now we understand what is flow chart and how to write the flow chart so now without wasting much time we'll go to some examples so that we can understand it properly so now in the last class only i have given you one example of uh, largest of three numbers right you have written its algorithm that's why i'll go through its uh, flow chart first so that we can understand it properly okay na? so the first example example number one is what largest of 
three numbers. You know how to write its algorithm. I suggest you before drawing its flowchart, you just watch the algorithm once so that you can understand it better in a better way. I hope it is clear. Hmm. Okay. So, so, so what is the largest of three numbers algorithm we did? You just look into a book. So, it is the largest of three numbers algorithm. Okay. So, what we did here? We first considered three values. We are read it. Read A, B, C. Okay. Then, if A is greater than B, then directly go to the step 4. If A is greater than B means we have to uh, think of whether A is greater than C or not. So, if A is not greater than B, then B is greater than A. So, we have to see whether B is greater than C or not. Because among A, B, C, we are learning which is the greater one. Okay. So, like this we have written the algorithm. Okay. So, applying the same in the form of diagram. How to do? So, what we have to do first, very first step is what? Start. Okay. So, in your chart, huh, in your chart of geometrical symbol, you see which symbol we use to start. Is it an oval? Yes. So, first we have to start the program in a oval. Huh? In a oval shape, you have to start the program first. Okay. Now, what we have to do? We have to read those three numbers A, B, C. Hmm? We have to read those three numbers. So, now connecting the next step. To that, we use arrows. Okay. So, what is your second step? Read A, B, C. So, read A, B, C is nothing but it is a instruction you are giving to the computer. Or that is the input you are giving. So, how to write the input? So, to write the input, we have parallelogram. Right? So, in the parallelogram, what we have to write? Read A, B, C. Okay? Read A, B, C is the second step. Okay? So, now. Now, the first thing is, is A is greater than B? First, what we did? If A is greater than B, that we have to do. So, if A is greater than B or not, that is the decision we have to make, no? So, to decision making. For decision making, which, which uh, symbol we use? Is it a diamond? Yes. So, in diamond, we are making a decision. What decision? Is A is greater than B? Question mark. Is A is greater than B? So, if we have two possibilities here. Whether A is greater than B or B is greater than A. So, B is greater than A is nothing but this statement is false. So, the first assumption is this statement is true. Second assumption is this statement is false. Okay. So, if A is greater than B, then among A and B, A is the largest. Now, we have to think of among A and C, which is the largest. So, if this is true, if this is true we will go for another decision that is is a is greater than c because among a b c we are finding which is the largest so if a is greater than b obviously b is the less one so a becomes bigger here so now we don't know c so we have to think among a and c which is greater so, if A is greater, then we, we directly give it print A. So, if this statement is true, we have to go here. So, now if this statement is false, false means what? B is greater than A. Now, we have to compare B with A, B with C. Okay. Is B greater than C? Here also in these two conditions, we again will get the, what? Two, two decisions, whether this is true or this is false. 
here also whether this is true or this is false okay if so see here first or okay see here first if b is greater than c so already here we discussed that b is greater than a now again if b is greater than c so among a b c b become the larger so again at the last what is it we are writing the output directly what is output print b print b is the largest b is largest because see here only this part if a is greater than b this became false that means what b is greater than a so if b is greater than a compare b with c if b is also greater than c then directly the output is b is the largest right here also see here a is greater than b it became true so among a and b a is the bigger so now we have to compare a with c so among a and c if a is the bigger directly we will give the output like print print a is largest okay so this is the two possibilities we will get so again here this can also be false this can also be false if a is not greater than c a is less than c because we have already proven here that a is greater than b but a is less than c means b is already less than a so if a also is less than c means obviously c is the largest right so here c is the largest again here also you see if b is greater than a here a is already less than b so if b also becomes less than c means both a and b are less than c so c is the largest so in these two cases we will prove as c is the largest so what is the output we want print c is largest right so these three outputs we can get so at the end we have to stop the program and to stop the program we use oval stop okay so this is the flow chart for largest of three numbers okay again we i have given you one more example in the algorithm that is area of a circle no you try to form the flow chart of area of circle by your own okay one more example i'll discuss here so one more example we'll discuss that is draw a flow chart to find roots of quadratic equation okay so if this ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 is one quadratic equation normally you think don't know now forget about the flow chart normally what we will do if this much is given ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 okay if this much is given what we will think first how the a is is a is equal to 0 or a is not equal to 0 this condition we will observe first right so if a is equal to 0 the root is already minus c by b right so if a is not equal to 0 the root is what b square minus 4ac d is equal to b square minus 4ac this is the general way of solving any quadratic equation right so here also here also this is directly the answer we got but here b square minus 4ac doing b square minus 4ac so if you get the roots of this kind okay so if d is the root of b square minus 4ac means uh, d is the root of this thing you consider so we will think how this b square minus 4ac is is it equal to 0 or is it greater than 0 or is it less than 0 again three possibilities here so if it is equal to 0 they are equal roots we will get equal roots it is less than 0 
means uh, if it is less than 0 we will get complex roots but it is if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 we will get here distinct roots right so this is the way of solving or this is the way of finding any uh, finding roots of any quadratic equation i hope you know it already so this whatever this theoretical way of solving the problems we have no that we have to put in here no you know don't need to find roots actually but considering abc and finding their roots in general we don't want a precise value here okay so let's start doing it okay so the first step the very first step is what start the program and writing it in a oval start okay now the second step is input what is input abc is the input so we have to read abc and that we have to write in a parallel parallelogram okay so the very first thing what we have to do the very first thing is a a is greater than 0 or a uh, means a is equal to 0 or not equal to 0. So, let make a decision first by writing in a diamond is a is equal to 0. Hmm? Let make the, this decision first. One decision is what? Yes, a is greater than a is equal to 0. Hmm? One decision is yes a is not equal to 0 right so to the not equal to 0 part what we have means first see equal to if it is equal to the root is minus c by b if it is not equal to root is minus b square minus or b square minus 4ac so first go here so if it is if it is uh, what greater than 0 uh, equal, uh, if it is equal to 0 then process we have to write here first we have to write here what is the root we get like formula we have to write first so what is the root we get here root is equal to minus c by b this is what formula means what we are in the process we are processing the program so the processing is written in form of what rectangle okay so now you substituted the values of C and B and obviously we will get the answer that is output print root and stop the program. Okay, so this is the case when A is equal to 0. Now A is not equal to 0. Here false means what a is not equal to 0 so what we have to do now a is if a is not equal to 0 we know what is the formula what is the processing d is equal to b square minus 4ac what is d means i have considered the root as d so this is your formula okay now here also we again have three cases no i told you how the d is so make again a decision diamond is d how the d is so sometimes it is greater than 0 sometimes it is means possibilities if it may be greater than 0 it may be equal to 0 or it may be less than 0 these three possibilities we are getting okay so now if if d is equal to 0 what is the answer if d is equal to 0 we will have equal roots if it is greater than 0 distinct roots if it is less than 0 complex roots so if first see here if it is equal to 0 equal to 0 the answer is what print the output directly i'll write here print equal roots right now if it is less than 0 print 
complex roots complex roots it should not come outside now if it is greater than 0 if the d is greater than 0 then print which roots distinct roots print distinct roots okay so this is the three possibilities understood you can also uh, again for proceed for what are equal roots what is complex what is distinct but i think it is enough now so now you have to stop the program this is the straight line now stop the program understood so this is how we have to draw the flow charts understood watch the video carefully and uh, uh -huh. okay so this is what i have completed the first part of this chapter means the basic things of programs or the basic things related to computer or computer communications okay so from the next class i'll directly start the structure of c programming now this algorithm flowchart is all what to write any program you should know these things right to write any program what are the basic things required i told you so from the next class we'll purely discuss about c programming okay now so about this part where we discuss the basic things flowchart and algorithms i'll provide the notes of these things very soon before the next class i'll provide the notes of this thing don't worry about that so from the next class we'll purely deal with the c programming so for that you have to be perfect in all these basic things first and i'll give you the notes very soon don't worry about that okay na? so thank you meet you in the next class